while we fight. In verse number one, it said, but it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth, he was angry, and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. He mocked the people of God. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, what do these feeble Jews, what are they doing? What is it that these people of God are trying to accomplish? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones? The enemy has been mocking your efforts to build a righteous life in Jesus Christ as he sees you because he knows where you came from. The, the devil certainly remembers who it is that you used to be. He, he knows all of your pitfalls and and all of your mistakes. And now that he sees you're here on the last day of 2015 in the house of God, uh, he sees that you're still reaching for Jesus. Uh, he turns to his captains in his evil army and he says to them, what will these people of God do? They, they think they're going to be free from my devices and schemes and plans. Do these, do these Christians really think that they're going to rebuild their hearts, that they're, that they're really going to rebuild their finances? Do they really think they're going to restore their marriages? Do these, do these Christians really think that they're going to be free from drugs and alcohol and cigarettes? Do, do they really think that they're going to restore the waste places? Do they really think that they're going to find a way to be free from their sexual sin? Uh, the enemy has even sent evil people to mock your efforts. Uh, some of us have had to encounter people who saw us and said, you're never going to make it. Some of us have had to endure even in in the house of God. Um, our own brothers and sisters who looked at us and said that we'd never be any good and they opened their mouths to say will they fortify themselves but I came to tell you that the answer today is yes we will. Um, they came and said will they sacrifice? Uh, are they now after everything they've done are they going to come into the house of God and shout hallelujah and give God glory and I came to tell you today that the answer is yes, we will. Now, will they reach completion? Will they complete the work? I, I came to tell you that if God has begun a good work in you, I, he will see it through to the end. And so the answer is yes, we will. Uh, will they revive the stones from the worthless and burned up heap of rubble? that they call a life. Uh, will they pull their life from the bottom all the way back up to the top? Uh, and I came to tell you, if you're willing to keep your hand uh, in the master's hand, the answer surely is yes. Yes, we will. Uh, the pieces and parts of our life might be nothing but burned up rubble, uh, but God can surely revive the stones. God can surely bring life back into that which was dead. Uh, God can give life back to your dead relationships and uh, God uh, can give life uh, back into your dead health situation. Uh, God uh, can give life back into your dead finances. God can revive anything uh, that the enemy can kill. If I got one believer in the house, you ought to clap your hands and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In verse number three, the enemy even had enough nerve to say that even a small fox would knock down what God's people try to build. Uh, went to another level of mocking. Uh, this is what they're trying to put back together. Uh, even a small thing could stop them from doing uh, what the Lord has put in their heart. How dare the enemy stand up and say, such demonic things to the people of God. Uh, how, how dare any devil stand up and say that there's no way you can make it and if you make any progress it's surely still going to lose. Uh, oh, what gave this enemy such nerve to stand and defy the armies uh, 
of the living God. Uh, I can see David standing on a hill now looking at Goliath. Uh, when Goliath stood to defy the armies of the living God, uh, what gave you the nerve to think that you could stand against the Almighty? Uh, the very one who said, let there be light, uh, and light sprang forth uh, out of nothingness to shine across the darkness. Uh, we serve the Almighty God, and that's why I can say uh, anything the enemy can challenge you to. Uh, Anytime he's got enough nerve to open his mouth and say, will you do it? Uh, you ought to look right back at the devil and say, yes, I will. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Um, the enemy has already declared your failure. But I came to tell you today, he can't stop your work. Uh-huh. You see, this is the passage we started off with last year at watch night. Uh-huh as we began to go into our phase of working the shift. Uh, and God has brought us around full circle to this same passage of scripture. Uh, and I want to let you know, if you're still here today, it is evidence uh, that the devil can say anything he want to say about your life. Uh, let him cast every kind of curse he wants to pronounce against you. Uh, but the one thing the devil can't do is stop your work. Uh, the devil can't stop your prayer life. Uh, the devil the devil can't stop your fasting. The devil can't stop your giving. The devil can't stop your loving. The devil can't stop your mercy. No matter what he does, he can't stop you from working in the power of God. If you got a made up mind, I'm going to do everything God has put in front of me to get done. The devil can't stop you from doing a single thing that God has empowered you to do. If you feel like you can make it, huh? if you feel like you can keep on keeping on, huh? if you feel like you can walk into 2016 with your head held high, huh? somebody ought to put your hands together and say yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Verse number six, it said, uh, so built we the wall. And all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. The Jews in the time of Nehemiah, ah, they built the wall and they accomplished the will of God uh, and built the city of God from the ruins of a disastrous past uh, because they had a mind to work. Um, I said a disastrous past because I want you to understand uh, the reason the city was a ruinous heap was because the people had messed up. Uh huh. They couldn't blame it on the Babylonians why their city was a ruinous heap. Uh, it was the Jews themselves that had messed up. Uh huh. We can relate to it our own selves. Huh. Somebody in here sitting right now, huh? your life is a hot blazing mess uh, and you can't blame the person next to you on your row because huh? we done tore up our own houses. Huh? We done messed up our own ministries. Huh? But at some point, the Jews had to come to themselves. Huh? They had to say, even though I'm stuck down in here in Babylon, because huh? I messed up and I had to pay the price. Huh? But I hear the voice of God. Huh? I hear you calling me. Huh? Calling me to come back home. Huh? Come unto me, all ye that labor. Huh? And I heavy laden. Huh? And I will give you rest. Huh? God stands in the roadway. Huh? With his arms stretched out wide. Huh? You done messed up your life. Huh? Yeah. Huh? You done messed up your marriage. Huh? You done messed up your spiritual walk. Huh? You done messed up your finances. Huh? But God is saying, come on back home. Huh? There's a day coming huh? for you to rebuild the waste places. Huh? I'm calling you now huh? to stand up on your feet, huh? to take the bricks in your hand huh? and build up what God huh? has put in your heart, huh? what God has put in your mind. Huh? You have a promise from the Lord. Huh? And the the devil can't cancel huh? what God has proclaimed for your life. Huh? If you believe it, somebody ought to say yes. They were successful 
and rebuilding the walls of the city because the people had a mind to work. Uh, yeah, they had a made up mind. Uh, they had it settled in their inner man. Uh, I didn't come here to play around. Uh, I didn't come here to be jelly backing. I didn't come back over here to be confused. I got a mind to work. I got a mind to do what God has put in front of me. I got a mind to accomplish the will of God for my life. I want to tell you, if you're going to make it with the Lord, the first thing you're going to have to do is have a made up mind. Look at your neighbor and say, I've got a mind to work. Ah. Now that was super weak. I couldn't hear you and we in the same room. Find yourself another neighbor. Look at them in the eye. Open up your mouth and say, I've got a mind to work. Yes. I hope somebody in here really have a made up mind. Because let me tell you, there's a storm on the horizon. There are difficult days ahead. And if you're going to make it in the army of the Lord, you're going to have to have a strong constitution. You're going to have to have a made-up mind. It don't look how I want it to look, but I'm standing with Jesus because I have a made-up mind. It didn't turn around as fast as I wanted it to, but I'm going to stand right here with Jesus. Jesus, because huh? I've got a made up mind. Huh? I slowed down along the way. Huh? I tried to turn back around the way. Huh? I tried to stop a few times, huh? but God hasn't left me, huh? and I'm not going to leave him now, because huh? I've got a made up mind. Huh? If you got a made up mind, huh? somebody ought to put your hands together huh? and say, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, verse number seven. <laughs> verse number seven. <laughs> now I'm skipping verse number six. Verse number six said, <laughs> no, I'm right. Verse number seven. But it came to pass uh, that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians uh, and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites uh, heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up uh, and that the breaches began to be stopped, uh, then they were very wroth. <laughs> and conspired all of them together uh, to come and fight against Jerusalem uh, and to hinder it. Uh, I came to tell you today, uh, when the devil hears that you are rebuilding your life under the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, he gets mad and he will attack you. Uh, do I have a witness in the house today? Uh, the devil wasn't mad at you as long as you was doing wrong. Uh, the devil didn't have two words to say to you as long as you was on his side. Uh, long as you was drunk somewhere lost in a corner long as you was high sitting in the dope house didn't know your own name devil didn't have nothing to send your way but as soon as you say i'm gonna get clean i'm gonna live right i'm gonna be holy i'm gonna get it back together i'm gonna apologize i'm gonna seek peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord now here comes the attack of the enemy. Now here comes health problems. Now here come relationship problems. Now your children start acting up. Now your husband loses his mind. Now the truck breaks down. Now your life sounds like a country song. Soon as you start trying to do right, the devil starts trying to do wrong. That's just the way it is. That's why you got to have a made up mind. I'm going all the way with Jesus. No turn around. No turn around. But I've got to keep on keeping on. I got to keep on pressing through. I got to keep on fighting my way. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. If I die, let me die. But I'm going to be in the army of the Lord. Somebody got to have a maid of mine in the house today. Somebody say amen. Uh-huh. Verse number nine said, Nevertheless, uh, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. In the face of every attack of the enemy, 
our prayer is unto our God. Yes, the devil is getting busy. Yes, he's trying to bring confusion. Yes, he's trying to sow discord. Nevertheless, we make our prayer unto our God. Oh, the devil is bringing sickness and disease on somebody's body. Nevertheless, our prayer is unto our God. Yes, somebody got laid off the job. Nevertheless, our prayer is unto our God. Somebody's ministry went down the tubes. Couldn't get the help you needed. Couldn't get the support you needed. Nevertheless, our prayer is unto our God. The devil whispering in your ear. You ought to give up. You ought to quit. You ought to turn around. Nevertheless, 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 our prayer is unto our God. Somebody ought to get a nevertheless in your spirit. Somebody need a nevertheless down in your soul. That's a made up mind. Devil, you can do what you want to do. Somebody holler back at me and say, nevertheless. Uh, our prayer uh, is still unto our God. Uh, I'm still going to be a praying man. Uh, I'm still going to be seeking his face. Uh, oh, uh, I won't turn around. Uh, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Uh, God is worthy of my praise. Uh, God is worthy of my trust. Uh, God is worthy of my faithfulness. Because uh, when I wasn't faithful to him, uh, he was faithful to me. Uh, when I wasn't faithful to myself, he was faithful to me. He never failed me yet. So come hell or high water. Nevertheless, 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 my prayer is unto my God. Somebody ought to say yes. Uh -huh. Put your hands together and bless his name. Ah, uh, verse number 14 said, And I looked up and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your houses. I came to tell you today, let us remember why it is that we fight. Let us remember why it is that we stand. Let us remember why it is that we got to have a made up mind. We fight the good fight of faith, not just for our own souls, but for those of our brethren, for those of our sons. We're fighting for our daughters. We're fighting for our wives. We're fighting for our husbands. We're fighting for our households. We've got a fight to fight. We don't got time to retreat. We don't got time to run from the devil. Fight on, mighty warrior. Fight on. Keep on standing on the battlefield. Keep on praying in the spirit. Keep on speaking in tongues. Keep on laying hands on the sick. Keep on preaching the gospel. Keep on witnessing about the goodness of God. Somebody high five your neighbor and say, fight on. Mighty warrior, fight on. You got to keep on pushing. You got to keep on pressing. Yes, we see the enemy on the other hill. They got swords and spears. They got horses and chariots. But you know what we got? We got the mighty God. My God is bigger than depression. My God is bigger than anger. My God is bigger than fear. My God is bigger than anxiety. My God is bigger than NIPSCO. My God is bigger than AEP. My God is bigger than CPS. My God huh, is bigger than anything huh, that the devil can bring. Huh. Somebody remember the Lord huh, and fight the good fight huh, in the name of Jesus. Huh. If you're going to fight, huh, if you're going to stand, huh, if you're going to win, huh, somebody put your hands together huh, 
and say yes. Uh huh. Verse number 15, it said, and it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us and God had brought their counsel to not that we returned all of us to the wall, everyone done to his work. Everyone returned. Everyone went back to doing what God had called them to do. There have been plenty of distractions disruptions, delays, but it's time to get back to work. You've been injured, even by the people who are supposed to be working beside you. But baby, it's time to get back to work. They said you couldn't do it. And for a moment, you might have believed them and stopped in your place. But sir, it's time to get back to work. Look at your neighbor and say, get back to work. No time for stopping here. This is a no parking zone. It's time for us to get back on the wall in the name of Jesus. Verse 16 and 17 said, and it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work and the other half of them held both the spears and the shields and the bows and the habergeons and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. The princes were behind the house of praise. If you want to know how the wall's going up, if you want to know how the city's going to get built, if you want to know how your life will be restored, you're going to have to rule from behind the house of praise. You see, Judah means praise. Somebody said, send Judah first. You want to know how to get that thing done? First thing you got to do is find your Judah. First thing you got to do is find your praise. You wonder why it's so bad? You wonder why it's so quiet? Somebody need to open up their mouth and release a sound out of your belly. Somebody need to release that mighty rushing river. Somebody need to open up their mouth and say, he's worthy. He's worthy. Yes. Where is your praise? Are we limping out of 2015? Are we being rolled out on a stretcher? Are we so injured that now we don't have a praise in our mouth? Where are the mighty warriors? Where are the ones who have a praise on the inside? Not just a praise on your lips, but a praise that rolls around in your belly. A praise that comes out of your experience. A praise that comes out of your warfare. Is anybody willing to magnify the name of the Lord? I'm injured, but I'm still praising him. I've been dragged down, but I'm still praising him. I've been pushed away, but I'm still praising him. I've been rejected, but I'm still praising him. Somebody ought to say glory. Ah, the rulers, the princes, the mighty ones who make it happen, yes, they are backing the house of Judah. They're behind the house of praise. Verse 17 said, they which build it on the wall and they that bear burdens with those that laid it, everyone with one of his hands wrought in the work and with the other hand held a sword. What that means is, they up there on the wall, they're building the city of God. Now everybody who came up here is both a warrior and a builder. That's what God's calling for in this new season. You gotta learn how to be a warrior and a builder. So with one hand they wrought the work. With one hand they had a brick and some mortar. With one hand they're building. With one hand they're stacking it up and making the Lord's name great. In the other hand, they had a sword to fight the enemy. So even though I'm fighting, I got to keep on building. I can't come down from building just because there's warfare. But I can't stop fighting the fight just to build the wall. Because if I'm trying to build but not willing to fight, 
the enemy will come and knock down what God is building. So I got to be willing to stand and do double duty. And if you got to serve double duty, you need a double anointing. Lay your hand on your neighbor. Put your hand on their shoulder right now and say, I pronounce a double anointing. I pronounce a double anointing. We're going to build while we fight. We're going to fight while we build. We're going to see victory on both fronts. The enemy is defeated. The name of the Lord is exalted. If you believe it, somebody say yes. Uh, uh, under attack of the enemy, Nehemiah's men continued to build with bricks and mortar in one hand and a sword in the other hand. They had to fight the enemy and build the kingdom at the same time. You're going to have to learn how to travail. You're going to have to learn how to spend some time on the floor. Put your face in the carpet and say, God, I call on you. No other rock do I know. You have to learn how to get down on the floor and say, Jesus, I need you. You have to learn how to stand back up and say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I will be saved. My children will be saved. My household will be free from demons. Satan, you are defeated, foe in denial. You got to learn how to turn back around. Put your face back in the floor. Say, Jesus, I need your strength. Jesus, speak to me now. Jesus, show me the way. Then you got to get up off the floor and say, the Lord said that way. Forward march. And I will not stop until I reach my wealthy place. Until I reach my healed place. Until I reach my prosperous place. Until I reach my powerful place. But I'm not going to stop what I'm doing. Just because the enemy showed up. Last time he came, I got scared and I stopped. And the work of the Lord suffered. But this time, I made up my mind. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, this time. This time it's going to be different. This time I'm going to see victory. This time I'm going all the way with the Lord. This time I'm not running. This time I'm not folding. This time I'm not scared. I'm going to build while I fight. Somebody say yes. There's no time for excuses and pity parties. Our brethren are counting on us. Our children are depending on us. Ah, this final generation is relying on us to endure hardship as good soldiers, to stay on the battlefield and build while we fight. This is no time for a sabbatical. This is no time to go and lick our wounds. Oh, this is no time for taking a breather. While you're taking a breather, the devil is plotting and attacking. It's time to return to the wall. It's time to return to the work. It's time to understand we're going to have to build while we fight. Uh -huh. I know that there are difficult days ahead. Uh -huh. The clouds overhead look dark. Uh -huh. The storm is upon us. Uh -huh. But when the enemy comes in like a flood, uh, the Spirit of the Lord uh, will raise up a standard against him. Uh, have you ever felt like your life was being overflowed? Uh, you ever felt like the enemy was too much to handle? Uh, you ever felt like it was so high you couldn't get over it? Uh, but when the enemy comes in like a flood, uh, the Spirit of the Lord uh, will raise up a standard against him. Uh, that standard means a flag, huh? a battle flag to which we gather, huh? a battle flag huh? to which we come together and say, in the name of Jesus, huh? that's the banner of our victory, huh? in the name of Jesus, huh? we have the victory, huh? in the name of Jesus, huh? Satan, he has to flee, huh? yes, huh? tell me who can stand against us, huh? When we call on his great name, huh? his name is Jesus. Huh? When I call his name, huh? 
I've got power. His name is Jesus. When I call his name, my body is healed. His name is Jesus. When I call his name, my finances turn around. His name is Jesus. When I call his name, my nerves are calmed down. His name is Jesus. When I call his name, my loved ones get saved. His name is Jesus. He's the mighty God. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the everlasting Father. He's the Lion of Judah. He's the Lamb of God. He's the King of Glory. He's the all in all. If you love him, if you love him, if you love him, somebody ought to say yes. Say yes. Say yes. I won't stop. I won't quit. I won't slow down. I won't pause. I won't sit down. I will not be quiet. I will not retreat. I will not accept defeat. We have been called and anointed by God to build while we fight. So yes, there's warfare coming upon us. But God has already declared, uh, you have the victory uh, if you stay in your position. Uh, as we enter into 2016, uh, I pray that you have a made up mind. Uh, this is the direction for our assembly. Uh, we are going to build while we fight. Uh, and in the midst of tumultuous times, uh, the city shall be completed. Uh, our goal shall be met. Uh, Greater Christ Temple, uh, you have been called to shift the world. Uh, you have been called to change a generation. Uh, you have been called to take the kingdom into the streets uh, and bring the streets into the house. Uh, you've got a calling on your life. Uh, you've got a victory hanging over your head. Uh, all you got to do is reach for it. Uh, all you got to do is put out your hand and take it. Uh, if you're willing to work the shift, uh, if you're willing to apply yourself to what God said, huh? you've got a victory in your life, huh? but you got to be willing to build while we work. One more time, why don't you put your hands together and bless the name of the Lord. We've got to be willing to build while we work excuse me build while we fight build while we fight and don't let the enemy make you come down from what god has called you to do we're going to see some intense days we're going to see some battles we don't understand but i stand here to promise you today if you just stay with jesus you'll come out on the other side with victory if you're willing to build while we fight.